everyone, it's Lori from Scraps by Sissy. Did you know that Scraps by Sissy is going to be seven years old on Friday, June 23rd? That's right, seven. That's a big number for a blog. I can't believe I've actually been around that long. Okay, so I should say the blog has been around that long. I've been around a whole lot longer than seven years, but we're not going to count that. So to celebrate this fabulous birthday, I'm going to be giving away this stamp set, Crafting Forever. Because after all, what we're doing is crafting, right? So what you need to do is go to scrapsbysissy.com and look for the blog post for this card and leave a comment. Then on Friday, I'm going to use random.org to do a random drawing and that lucky winner will get that stamp set. So in the meantime, I thought I'd go ahead and show you how I made this card. I thought it was actually kind of pretty for a celebra celebratory blog post. So what we're going to be using is <clears throat> the card base is done in Pacific Point. There is, that's cut at eight and a half by five and a half and it's scored at four and a quarter. And we have a one and three quarters by four and a half piece of Whisper White cardstock. There is a piece of three and one eighth by four and one eighth piece of basic black. We're going to use the watercolor paper for the watercoloring and it's cut at three by four. I have a scratch piece of Whisper White for the sentiment that we're going to cut out using one of the stitched framelits. And then I have a Melon Mambo piece that's cut with one of the oval, the layering ovals. So let's do the watercoloring. So if you haven't watercolored before, you can use any paper, but the watercolor paper is actually better. It doesn't, um, it doesn't warp like some of the other papers. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take three of the watercolor pencils, the Daffodil Delight, the Pacific Point, and the Melon Mambo. And all you're going to do is color. And on this, you're just going to color randomly. And I'm going to overlap some of the colors to try and blend the colors. Remember when you were in grammar school, they taught you what the basics of the color palette was. Oops. And you're just going to randomly color over the paper. I can hold it still for you. And the harder you press using the watercolor pencils, the deeper your coloring will be. And we'll use some of the blue. Remember blue and yellow make green. And then we're going to come back over with some more of the pink. Pink and blue make purple. We'll come back down here. There. And you don't have to be perfect with this because when you blend it using the aqua painter, you'll see how it spreads the color. Now you don't want it to be real wet. You can see there's water in here. And I'm just activating the water. Always have a paper towel handy to mop up some of your water. And we're just going to come through and paint. And this is going to spread the water, spread the ink. And you kind of want to be a little careful when you get to the point where you've mixed the colors. I'm just going to clean the brush and come through like this. Now we're in here, we're going to make some green. The darker colors do work a little bit better when you're blending colors. Oops, let's clean that up a little bit. I'll come back through. And since this is the bottom of the card, I don't need to worry about color cleaning up the brush so much because I wanted purple all through there. Now, you would make sure you want to have a piece of scratch paper under your work surface. Now, we'll let that dry for a minute. As you can see, the paper kind of bows, but as it dries, it will flatten out. While we're waiting for that to dry, we'll go ahead and stamp our sentiment and cut it out. We're using the Archival Black, Basic Black. 
And we're also going to be using, the two stamp sets I'm using for this card are obviously the Crafting Forever, but I also used the Touches of Texture, which is another stamp set. It's a fun eclectic set. I'm using this, I guess you could call it an ink splotch stamp to break up some of the blue in that card on the card base. And you're just going to ink it up. I am going to get, I'm going to use a piece of one of our grid papers to stamp on so I don't stamp the ink on my background paper here. And you're just going, whoops, that's not the one. We want this one. This is the one that has the splotches on it. And you're just going to randomly stamp, just like that. Clean our stamp off. And now we will stamp the sentiment. And of course, as a crafter, doing something creative every day makes you happy. So that's the sentiment I'm going to use. I'm going to use the same block. And since we're going to cut it out, I don't have to worry about it being real straight. Obviously, since I stamped it so crooked, so we're going to use the Big Shot. And this is probably going to make the table shake a little bit, but I've never shown you the Big Shot, so I thought now would be a good time. Since I have the sentiments already stamped on this, I'm going to use the uh, magnetic platform. So I'm going to set, let's move that over, set that here. And see, it holds the framelit in place. Put our top on and just run it through the big shot. And those creaking noises are normal. Set that aside. Crash, man down. Is our sentiment. So we will put that together, add some snail adhesive. Stick him down, and this is pretty dry now, so we're going to take our block and we're going to add the brushes in the flower pot, stick that down, ink that up, and we're going to use, because the watercolor paper has such a texture to it, you want to make sure you use your, the stamp and pierce mat or something else to give the bottom of to give cushion to the stamp so that it really gets into those nooks and crannies. Isn't that pretty? Put away our ink pad. We'll glue him down. Get him in the middle. There we go. Use the bone folder to make a good crease. We'll adhere this up to the top. We will adhere him down. We're going to put him kind of on a like a step down. We will add some of our Stampin' Dimensionals. Love, love, love our Stampin' Dimensionals. And have you seen the mini ones yet? Oh, they are so cute. But I don't need the little teeny tiny one for this. So add the sentiment and then some of the basic rhinestones. I still have a couple of sets from the ones that got retired. There you go. So again, head over to scrapsbysissy.com, find the post with this card, leave a comment, and I will choose a winner on Friday. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day.